Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you these, the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless 3. Let's check them out. Okay, starting off with the build. Here they are. It ends up you can actually flip them on by lowering the left ear cup. There's a switch right here. You can see that light turns on, off, on. It's nice. That was a feature that the AirPods Max didn't have that I kind of wish they did have, and these do have that. These are actually kind of packed full of features. Some that are good, some that are not. Uh, but let's go through build first and then we'll talk about all of that. So the bottom here, luckily, we do have a Type-C plug. That is nice. This can be used for charging. It can be used for uh, connecting from a computer to the internal DAC of the headphone, which is nice. And while doing that, it will also charge it. There is a twist lock analog input, which I'm not a big fan of that, but you know what? At least there's an analog input. There's a switch right here that lets you toggle between um, no sort of active mode on it, and then active noise canceling or the transparency mode. And there is a lot going on inside of these software wise. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. That covers a lot of the exterior features. These do vibrate when you get a phone call. I'm not kidding, the headphones actually have a vibrating motor and they will vibrate on your head or on your desk if they're connected to Bluetooth when you get a phone call. So that's interesting. Comfort wise, the pads are great. I don't mind the pads at all. There is a bit of a notch right here where the microphone is, but it seems to be in just the right spot where it doesn't touch my ear at all. There's a little bit of clamp force. The adjustment mechanism on the side is great. What I don't like, however, is the headband. The headband is padded. There is foam in here, it's thick, but it is just hard as a rock and I really wish they had done what they did with the 650s or the 6XX and had a notch taken out in the middle because this is not particularly comfortable to me. Um, I know people who have tried it who have not had any problems with it, but it, it just gives me a headache. Okay, battery life. I actually haven't had to charge these since I got them. Battery life is pretty great. Uh, but also then again, I have probably haven't had to charge them because about half the time when I use them, I use them over type C mode because as we will discuss, that is really where these shine the most. You can use them straight analog, um, but I don't really prefer that with these headphones. I think it's okay. They sound good over Bluetooth, but where they really shine is when you plug them from Type-C in this headphone to Type-C in a computer, and then you're using the internal DAC of the Momentum 3 wireless. Just a straight lossless connection. You can use it in Tidal exclusive mode, so it is sending signal and controlling this DAC directly in the headphone, the amp directly in the headphone without any middleman, just title straight data into this DAC and amp. That sounds great. However, the tuning is a bit weird. I do have to use the Sennheiser app to set an EQ for them, uh, which luckily once you set an EQ, it bakes the EQ into the headphone. So now anything else I plug this into, it retains those EQ settings. That I really like a lot and I wish they had done that on the AirPods Max. The EQ that I set for this headphone, because it comes out of the box with pretty boosted bass and treble, is minus six decibels of bass. I leave the mid-range uh, as it is, and I pull the treble down about three decibels. To me, that sounds a lot more balanced than the stock tuning of these headphones. Even then, the bass does hit kind of hard. Now, if you are an absolute bass head, you'll probably love the stock tuning of these, and you might even increase it more. Uh, to my preferences though, I was very happy with this EQ preset that I baked on, and now anything I plug it up to, like I said, it retains those EQ settings, and I'm happy with the tuning. If you are using this on Type-C mode, the detail is very surprising. On both uh, computers or through Android phones over Type-C, it is very, very, very impressive how much detail you can get out of this in a mobile headset. I do have a lot of complaints about the software side of things, uh, but sound-wise, I'm pretty happy with this headphone. Soundstage and imaging, soundstage is not very big. It definitely sounds like a closed-back headphone. Uh, imaging, there's not really a strong point there either. I would say that it is best with vocal clarity, and it kind of has the um, sound bubble sort of sound, so things are just right in here, right around your head. Uh, it's not like completely in your ear, it's not coming out of your head, but it's a very much closed-back headphone sort of sound, but with uh, very good clarity. I don't find it grainy. I don't find it hard to understand any fine details. I just find that it's very well articulated. It's very clear and not necessarily uh, exaggerated in any particular way other than the stock frequency response tuning. 
But overall, it's a good sounding headphone, especially if you're using it through type C. But here is where the problems are, the software. The software on this is a little bit of a mess. There is a feature so that when you take it off your head, it automatically pauses. And I disabled that, but it still does it anyway. If I make a phone call with these on my head, every like maybe 10, 15 seconds, it will mute the call and put it on hold or it will switch back to speaker on my phone and then switch back into this and go back and forth constantly. I was not able to get through a single phone call, unfortunately, at any point during using these over the past few weeks. So not ideal for that. And it could just be a compatibility issue with the phones that I tried it with, not sure. But I did have the same thing happen a lot when I was using it for um, music over Bluetooth. I would connect it to my laptop and while just sitting there listening, it would pause the music as if I was taking it off my head and then unpause and pause and unpause and go back and forth. It would by itself switch between the active noise canceling and the transparency modes. And just on the subject of that, the transparency mode, it's enough that you can understand what's going on around you, but it's not really a good transparency mode. Um, as much as I hate to say that, the active noise canceling does have a lot of cabin pressure, though there is a setting uh, there's three actually, there's maximum, there is a wind reduction, which actually works really well. And then there is a uh, lower pressure mode that's supposed to get rid of that cabin pressure feeling. I found that maximum worked pretty well for bass, uh, but not super well for high frequencies. The wind reduction mode worked almost perfectly. If I stood outside in wind, these would basically completely cut that out, but then wouldn't cut out other passive sounds. Uh, but oddly enough, the mode that was supposed to reduce cabin pressure and be a low pressure mode had the most pressure for me and actually was pretty intense. As a result, I usually just use these in the transparency mode, though it's also worth noting again that your EQ settings only really seem to work properly if you are either in active noise canceling or in transparency mode. You can't just have them turned off and everything work properly. It will not tune the way you had it tuned. So you have to leave it in one of those modes. So what does it boil down to? Well, if you wanna use this phone on the go over type C, it's great. If you wanna use it wirelessly or for anything else, you should probably get these instead. This is the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2. And while not perfect, the software for these is uh, much less buggy. It seemed to consistently work a lot better. And the quality is on a similar level if we're talking wireless. Like I said, these pull ahead if you're using them for type C, but wirelessly, I think these are my choice over the Momentum Wireless 3. I will have both of these linked in the video description, by the way. So overall, not really my cup of tea. I guess Sennheiser can't win them all for me. I have been using the 6XX slash 650 for probably a decade now, and I do love the 560S, but this one is just not for me. Either way, that's what it boils down to. This one is my preference, the Momentum True Wireless 2. Final comparisons to a few other uh, headphones that I use wirelessly. So comparing to things like the Sony 1000 XM4s, the uh, Bose QC35 II, the Bose 700. I find the 700s to be more comfortable on top, though the pads are much better on the Momentum True Wireless 3. The XM4s produce probably better detail wirelessly and a better experience wirelessly. However, if you're using these, like I said, over Type-C, I think that this takes the cake on pretty much all of those. And this is an interesting note. When I talked about these in the AirPods Max video, I said the AirPods Max was the most detailed Bluetooth wireless active noise canceling headphone. And in that use case it is, but the main reason for that being is because when you want this to perform at its best, you're using it over the Type-C connection. And over the Type-C connection, like I said, this is way more detailed than that. But at that point, it's a wired active noise canceling headphone, which is interesting. Uh, I still find the QC35 II to be considerably more comfortable, and it is a lot simpler features wise, which in some cases is a good thing. It's an older headphone, but this definitely beats out the QC35 II significantly on sound. Okay, I think that's going to wrap this up guys if you like this video please leave a like down below a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future if you want to get active in the community you can at forum.hifiguides.com and as always don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future until the next one guys peace